Hi everybody, this is Judy at Judy in the Kitchen. Today we're going to make some oatmeal cookies using roasted winter squash as a base. Now you could use canned pumpkin in this or you could use any roasted winter squash or even a combination. I actually have a combo of roasted butternut squash and acorn squash that I'll be using. First we want to start with our dry ingredients and you need a food processor for this and yes I have a very old one but it still works so I still use it. I have two cups of old-fashioned rolled oats here. You could use quick oats, that would be perfectly fine and you won't have to blend it quite as much as you would with the old-fashioned oats. And then we have two tablespoons of ground flax meal, these are already ground up, and two teaspoons of ground cinnamon. So we're going to go ahead and process this so we can get some oat flour in here and grind these up a little bit. It doesn't have to be a fine powder, but you do want to break these oats up some. So I'll be right back after we do that. All right, you can see our oats are ground up. In the meantime, you could be preheating your oven to 350 degrees. And so now I have one cup of mashed up roasted winter squash. And again, this is a combination of acorn squash and butternut squash, it's just something I had in the freezer and so I thawed it out and putting it right on in there. And then we have an optional ingredient of some maple syrup and you can add up to two tablespoons of maple syrup. You can actually add more if you want but this is plenty sweet for me and for my husband. We don't use a lot of sweetener. I do use a little bit here and there and so again this is optional but I'm adding two tablespoons of real maple syrup here and then you want to add three to four tablespoons of milk of choice I have some oat milk here that uh, my husband likes to use I'm going to start with three tablespoons of the oat milk and then I am going to process this and my goal is to have it where it's moist and everything sticks together very well but not overly wet. I reserve that one more tablespoon of oat milk in case I need it. So we're going to blend this up. Alright, this is blended real well. I did need to add that fourth tablespoon of milk and I want you to see that it just sticks together really well but it's not overly wet. Now you can add some optional add-in ingredients and I've got in the recipe which is below and also on my blog. You can add up to a half of a cup of added ingredients of your choice. I'm using about a fourth of a cup of raisins since I put the maple syrup in there. I don't want a half a cup of raisins. That's just going to be just too sweet for me. And a half a cup of these is enough. You could add some nuts of choice. You could add chocolate chips if you want. You could add other dried fruits, sunflower seeds, white baking chips, chopped up pecans, whatever. All sorts of things. Now I'm going to turn this back on just briefly just to have these ingredients blend together and then we're going to put them on a cookie sheet. Alright, I wanted you to see, I put this in a bowl so you could see it a little bit easier. See how it just sticks together really well, yet it's not early wet, not dry, it's just right. And so now we want to scoop it out onto either a parchment paper lined baking sheet or a silicone lined baking sheet. And I'm going to be using a number 40 cookie scoop. This holds one and three fourths tablespoons. So it'll make fair sized cookies with this. If you don't have a number 40 scoop, no big deal. Just use a couple of tablespoons and scoop it out. You can make these as large or as small as you want. Honestly, it's not a problem. So I'm just going to scoop this out and drop it on to my baking sheet. Now one point to bear in mind here is that these cookies will not flatten out like a traditional cookie would. So you're going to need to do that job for them and you could get a bowl of water and moisten your hands which is what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm just going to moisten my finger just a little bit with this and then 
lightly press it down. However you leave it is how it's going to turn out. Okay, and so we're just going to do this with all the dough. And then we're going to bake it at 350 in our preheated oven and let them go for about 15 to 18 minutes until they're lightly browned and set. I got right at 22 cookies out of these. They baked at 18 minutes at 350 degrees and it took two pans, two trays to do this. Do give this a try sometime and let me know how it works for you. This is Judy at Judy in the Kitchen. Bye for now.